welcome to Late Nights. Uh, today I am joined by Hisp and Snuska, uh, some brewers of the Kadama. I say of the Kadama because I think of the name of, of Hisp's list <laughs> and uh, the Kadama in the East Tree Boys. That's what that's what I hear in my head. <laughs> um, Good. Uh, and so uh, I'm super happy to have you guys here today. Um, can't wait to talk about uh, this commander, something that I think we all hold near and dear to our hearts. Um, but uh, please introduce yourselves and uh, you know a little bit about your decks. Who's first? <laughs> I have no idea. You guys can, can I go first? Yeah, yeah go, go for, for it. it yeah. All right. I'm Hisp. Um, I am, I guess, recently known for brewing and playing uh, Kodama Sakashima. I won the Crack Open at Kaldheim tournament, I guess that was in January, and then made it to the final table of uh, Marchesa in March. And I was, I played Kodama Sakashima in Mean 16, which I'm not sure that many people know about. Uh, I finished sixth out of 16, uh, which I was actually fairly happy with because uh, I was super mid rangey. And Kodama Sakashima is an anti stack deck, and there was only one stack deck in the 16 um, deck list. So that was a little rough. <laughs> um, I'm playing, I'm not playing Kodama Sakashima, I'm actually playing Yisan in uh, twin flame tomorrow it's like a team unified tournament uh, i'm playing with cole of uh the anala discord cole's gonna play his anala list and i'm gonna play a modified yisan uh with no fast mana and no fetches uh called yisan plan b whoa <laughs> that's awesome i guess uh yeah i i y yisan is I, so I guess the, the main decks that I play are Yisan, Anala, um, well, Anala, prim, number one, and then uh, Sakashima Kodama, uh, Yisan. I have, like, my own Yisan brew that is, like, very, I guess it's the fastest Yisan list that exists. There's no stacks pieces. <laughs> really, I just added Chalice of the Void as the only stacks piece. Oh, there's, like, stacks creatures. Anyway, uh, and I play uh, Yuriko. Um, I'm actually a mod in the Yuriko Discord, which is weird because I never talk there because it's very busy. Wow. Anyway, that's awesome. Um, that's, yeah, and I brew other decks. I actually have um, on Moxfield, I have uh, like 13 lists, I think. I just updated. I'm at like nine that have 100 cards in them that I would play. A lot of times if I play, I play primarily on Cockadrice these days i'm actually might start getting on in person now but um i don't like playing over webcam much so i play on cockatrice and i like randomly pick which deck i play i try to do that because i was like jamming yeast on all the time into rule of law and it's just getting like crazy results um so i'm try trying to be a little more reasonable with how well my decks do into like mixed meta which is what i, I build them for so awesome yeah i guess awesome. that's a good intro yeah it was well-rounded <laughs> um, Mr. Sinuska. Yeah, I should have gone first. I don't want to follow that. <laughs> Damn. Um, well, uh, I'm Snusk, Snuska, or as the Americans like to call me, Snusk, uh, or Martin. Because we're, uh, we're lame. I, <laughs> I brought up the, uh, the Soul Tie version of Kodama, Kodama Silas, back, way back when. And I play mainly on CDH Nexus. I have not had any time to play the deck in tournaments, really. Uh, but I am going to the live Tier 1 Con in August, where I might play the deck. I haven't actually decided yet. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I, I like to play that deck. Lately, I've been playing a lot of Rock to Vesh because of the, the new cards in Modern Horizons 2. Still go back to some uh, mid-power Kinnon every now and then that Harry knows about. That's always fun to play. My favorite. <laughs> yeah, I, I play the mid-range version instead, instead of mid-power. So uh, not the same as the one Harry has been rocking, but uh, a lot more stupid. <laughs> Rock to Vesh is, uh, can, can be very explosive. Rock to, I have had, I think I've gotten five turn one wins so far on the deck. 
Wow. Which is uh, insane. That's crazy. Yeah, I have played Anala um, like more than 100 times, and I think I've only had one turn one win, maybe two. I think I had another one in hand and someone wheeled before I could try to win. Yeah, most well, recent. This is, uh, well, f four turn one wins, one that I missed that I then won on turn two because I forgot to put rock in the, in the, in the graveyard for threshold. I miscounted. Huh. Otherwise, it would have been, so I count that as a as a fifth turn one win. But other than wow. that, and that's probably in I don't know five. That's probably like five turn one wins out of like fifty games tops. It, it's doing it's it's that's crazy. Well. Is it all Nas or yeah, just explosive Nas with a breach? Okay. And then now it runs. Uh, it, it used to have a secondary win con of Walker to Dragon with Turgrid in the deck, just because Turgrid was shutting it down a lot of the meta on the Nexus at that point. Huh. But I took out those because they were clunky and really sucked getting off Nas. And our secondary win con now is just the the new Dothy Voidwalker with Helm of Obedience, which higher pitch to me. Like you could just play Helm of Obedience with the new with the snacks piece. Like, fuck yeah, huh. yeah. That, that card is insane. That card's super crazy. Um, I haven't actually updated the Soul Tie version for Kodama yet with the new cards because there's a lot to think about because it's so mid rangey. There are so many ways to yeah. go with the deck. There were a and lot of playable yeah. cards in this last set. Yeah, and it's really hard to gauge where to go with the Soul Tri version now for me, because you can go in so many directions, it's really hard to balance the different kinds of lines and avenues you can take. So I'm, I'm still thinking about it while playing other decks. I haven't really committed to upgrading to a post-Modern Horizons list yet. But I'm working on it. Um, awesome. So... Let's, uh, first of all, shout out to y'all creativity, geez. Um, and then uh, secondly, uh, shift it to, into gears. So we have, between the three of us, we have three pretty different lists. Um, the one that I'm most like, I would say the, the, of the three lists, I think they're, they're all doing something very different but also doing something very similar, which is abuse Kodama. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm pretty focused on, um, cause I'm an Abzan Kodama, um, focused on utilizing Timna to draw me cards. Cause Kodama likes to empty out your hand pretty easily. Um, and then, uh, profit. That's like one of my biggest things versus when I look at the soul tie version, which is, eking out so much value because you're in blue and black um and then looking at the simic version which is literally draw cards win uh <laughs> that's how i see the decks um what do you think Sounds about right right what do you think are your takes on on the on your versions of your deck and how does it like abuse the kadama mechanic oh by the way uh if you have if you don't know we were talking about kadama kadama is a six cmc commander uh two green four colorless whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control if it wasn't put onto the battlefield with this ability you may put a permanent card with equal or lesser converted mana cost from your hand onto the battlefield um it has partner it's a six six and also has reach a lot of things a huge commander um so what do you think are your um Let's go. With, let's start off with Hisp, and then uh, we'll go into the Soul Tie version. Hisp, what do you think is your, the way you abuse Kodama the most? Uh, yeah, so I, I actually started trying to abuse Infinite Landfall Bounce when I first designed the deck. I um, I actually started with Kodama Tago. Was my very first iteration of a Kodama deck, and um Tago is very soft and dies to a lot of things so <laughs> yeah i played a few games with it and just got like i like i thought that the rock tokens was going to be like a very interesting sort of like anti-stacks you know i i actually pl I, I i played a lot on the cdh games server on trace games like pickup games and there are just a lot of people at the time of day that i would play that love to play rule of law um which was just miserable for Anala. And, yeah, for sure. You know, like, Yusin just 
tour into that, but I, I don't know, maybe I was, cause I was bored or whatever. And I would play some other lists and like, I just, I hate rule of law. Um, so, <laughs> says, this sort of like, law. it was like, can I just, can I, is there some sort of landfall looping? And then back of my head, I'm just like, I'm just going to crush the rule of law with this. Um, and it's going to be excellent. So I, I was playing with Tago and if you got Tago and like you, you would just get an outlet. So like, 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 um, regular fire weaver with a bounce land and then Tago Kadama out. But it, the, my intention was always to have like both Kada commanders out and then like do sort of a landfall looping thing and then win that way. But, um, and um, there was a user Emery's spelled with a three uh, actually had the very first um, Kadama Sakashima list. And it was like, it's similar. I still feel this way about Tashar. Like he would play, he would play that list and his list was pretty different than mine. He, he, he played a lot of stuff like um, uh, ruin crab or whatever that crab is that makes email. He would play stuff like that where it was more like outlets to, and I think he played the bounce lands. And still, I was just like terrified because I have no idea like what the deck did and like how it interacted. And that's still how I feel about Tashar. I, I, I like I have a terrible time assessing what's going on with the board state. Um, but I don't play against very much Tashar, so that's fine. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bit of a tangent. Anyway, uh, so I, you know, I thought I, I like Tago just died to one too many upgrades. And I was like, you know what, this, this other guy's been playing Sakashima and like Kodama at a six, six is like very hard to kill with anything, but targeted intentional removal. Yeah. I feel like and you're so, a, little, a little traumatized from the braids. Like you're like, I need something that has more than three. Yeah. I, well, <laughs> I don't like to be in those games and like sit there and just like my whole strategy just crumbled like by, because someone like just accidentally uh, you know, like cracked two treasures with a mayhem devil out. It's just like, like, I think that's what happened. Somebody had like a mayhem devil and was like, Oh, I guess I'll just kill this Tago. It's probably useful for them. And I was like, Oh no. Okay. No more of this nonsense. So, uh, so I started messing around with, um, Sakashima and I, at the first I didn't know, I didn't know. I just like, it wasn't in the at top of mind that when Sakashima entered, you get a six drop instead of a four drop. And then I was like, Oh man, so it's like, so I can, and then I think, I believe that Emery's list was running prime speaker. And that was just like, oh man, like this is excellent. And so I put in some clones. I don't remember, like I looked at, at their list, but then like, I really started making some hard choices. Like for example, they were not running Cloudstone Curio. And I was like, wait, you just, Cloudstone Curio with both Kadamas is just a straight win. And so I, I really refined my mana base and like added all of the possible draw lands like Bonders Enclave and even like Arch of Arazka, which is probably not played in any other deck. Uh, being the point being is if you have both Kadamas out and then, I mean, Kadama and Sakushima as a copy and then Cloudstone and like any land, you get infinite mana and then you can bounce the draw lands and draw your deck. Um, and so... I started just sort of building around that idea of like, okay, both Kadamas and then like, are there pieces that can give me, cause so I don't even know, I guess if, if he wasn't playing Curio, maybe he wasn't on Sunscorch Desert. And I was like, this is the best. Just like hitting people. It's still satisfying to just be like, see this awful land that no one ever plays in any other deck. Like it's killing you right now. Yeah. I, <laughs> so. I, I I've had like so much time to like, look at, at the list. And, and so I was a caster for, uh, the mean 16 and I saw how how Kadama played in some pretty fast pods and how it would take advantage of being in a situation where like the player before you just try to storm out and they they saw that you maybe had you know five mana and Kadama and they're thinking like oh okay well if as long as we can deal with you know the Kadama will be okay and then no one ends up dealing with it because oh hey look it's six man it's six 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 creatures it's hard to hard to kill that thing <laughs> like, <laughs> right and then he just and it blocks extremely well yes it blocks it, it, it blocks it, chrom mm -hmm. it blocks chrom no, not even breaking a sweat uh <laughs> and then the seeing the, your wins through your lands was just absolutely backbreaking like 
I mean, the, the pod that I won in Mean 16, which was what I teched against, because I actually didn't, I wasn't very familiar with a lot of the players. Like, I knew, for example, what Spleen and Comedian were going to play because they were in Marchesa final. But a lot of the other players, like, I figured Bad Dog was going to play Kalia, but I didn't have a lot of data points. And I, but I knew Michael Levine was going to play Heliod. And so I, I, because I was really thinking about playing Anala, because I split Marchesa with Anala and Sakashima Kadama. And, and I was like, I just do not, if there is like more, if there's like rule of law and Agila in like two of those decks, like in almost every pot, I come into a rule of law pod, I'm just going to be miserable. And I was like, okay, well, like I, you know, this deck held its own in Marchesa. Um, and then I, and I looked at the list and there was like so much blue farm and I was just like, oh, I'm just going to get buried in card advantage. Um, and the only pod that I won was the one I had with Heliod, which was super satisfying because it's like, that's what the deck is meant to do. It's, it's like it one stacks, but even like more, the more stacks, the better. Cause the only stacks piece that completely shuts off um, Kodama Sakashima is Dranith. Cause like all the combos are, there's no um, combos that don't focus around the commander. And four of two, right? Uh, I have some combos that you just need Kadama out and not Sakashima, but there's nothing, there's no way to win without Kadama out. No. Yeah. Rather than, and I think that's definitely a benefit to like the, the other, like Sultai, for example, I'm sure you're running Oracle and stuff. So you have some pivots versus like, I, you know, Dranith is like must kill. Oh yes. <laughs> Try kill on site for sure. The, uh... um, I was saying, I guess the only other thing I wanted to mention because somebody was saying, and you, this is just, I feel like this is a really important part of the deck is that, the, and this is, this distinguishes this deck, I think from some of the other Kadama lists, but is that, and something you mentioned earlier higher is that it's very hard for, especially players I'm familiar with the deck, but there's, there's a certain type of player and play style, I think that will almost refuse to interact unless like a tangible visible threat is in front of them. So like a lot of times if I cast, and this happened in one of the games in mean 16. So like I had Kadama and then I cast Sakashima and then so I, like, and I think it was, um, river McCry had a bounce spell in hand and they were holding it. Cause there was like a rule of law on the table, I think. And that was shutting them down. So they wanted to use it for that. And then, um, my, Sakushima entered as Kadama trigger and then I put a prime speaker down and then they were like, Oh God. And then they bounced Kadama. After the, but then there was another, you know, trigger, a six CMC trigger. Yeah. And it was like too late at that point. Like you couldn't stop me even with that one point of interaction. Yeah, you just put Kadama back down. Yeah. You just put Kadama right. back and you're good to go. <laughs> there was some reason that, I think it was like somebody had another spell or something, but I was able to like, I didn't, for some reason I didn't do that. Or like I put Kanama down and then they had like another spell and they got rid of it again. But then I had like a clone in hand. So I just had the clone enter as a copy of Sakashima, which is like, maybe you should have bounced to Sakashima, but then it's like, you get into this sort of like, Oh God, can I stop this now? And it's like already begun. It's like, you're in like a whirlpool of <laughs> Kodama triggers. Yeah. So I think that, that that is like something I really lean into because like I, I played in one game and it was like spleen face hit Kadama with um, a swords to plowshares like and I force a wield it and then on my turn I cast Sakashima which was actually a misplay like later on I should have I had a tireless tracker in hand I should have cast that instead and he just like force a will the Sakashima with no knowledge of my hand and I actually could not have won but he was just so, you know, it was his place to be like, I've seen this deck go off out of nowhere and I like can't stop it if it does. So I'm going to force a will. Um, yeah, there's only, there's literally only one point of interaction with the deck and that's quite literally when Sakashima is on the stack. Like that's, you yeah. can do something now, otherwise rest, rest in peace. Kill Sakashima or kill Kadama. Yeah, I, 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 I feel like, I don't think, I, yeah, it's from, at least in my mind, it's always literally just bounce kill the kadama while sakashima's on the stack so let sakashima resolve because we'll come in as a copy of something else that's useless and yeah i mean that's the ideal way to do it for sure which is why another good reason why i've i've tried to to put more just kadama centric 
um, you know, uh, provisioner, the tireless provisioner that just came out is a real great, uh, asset because it's a tutorable creature and just Ikadama. I mean, but Malok, Malok is the best, uh, oh, yeah. of the creatures that do that. And yeah, I know you run that in, in Sultai as well. So you just sort of like, we're like, well, all right, I'll just wait till I have eight mana. I mean, that's one of the things I actually, I haven't been keeping track, but in like in my head, I don't think I've lost a game where it's gone to one-on-one. Like if like the Nas player whips and then they die and then like somehow some other player gets beat to death and you end up one-on-one. Like I just have so much value in the deck that it's like, okay. Like I, I recently cut this card, but I was playing um, the great henge. I remember in a, in a game recently when I was just slammed that down, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to just like slam a few creatures down. And I, in my head, I was like, this, there's like no chance that I'm going to lose this game because I'm drawing like three or four cards a turn. The Great Henge, by the way, is so spicy, considering that you I, just have I 12 power on board. I tried to fit that in the Soul Tie <laughs> version, too, but I just never found a space for it. But in Simic, it seems so obvious. It's a little too, like, win more, actually, because yeah, you're not... Right. Yeah, I, well, I, I played with it for a while and it was like, it was one of those cards that it was a little like bit like hard to cut, but there's just been too many good cards recently. And then I also was in too many games where I just didn't have enough. It was more like I couldn't just getting the mana, the cum- like the critical mass of mana in the beginning of the game to get could I'm out and Sakashima out. It was like, I just whiffed one too many times. I was like, this hen is like not helping with that. And like, it's cool when it comes down for sure, but it's also not a card you're going to put in off of a Sakashima trigger. Yeah, exactly. uh, yeah. Like sometimes it's cool when you have the right kind of hand for it. But a lot of times it's like, this card is not going to be useful until I already have a good board state. At which yeah, point, you- like, yeah, I'm guessing you want to set up for the fact where if you cast Sakashima with Kodama out, you win and great hen just does not help you there. Because right, it's not, that it's is not the, or less. Yeah, you either win or you like and you give yourself more outs. Like, like I'll play for example, like I'll cast Sakashima and hold the trigger and cast like a gush. So then it's like okay, I draw two cards and then I have two lands that also come into play. So like two cards, two mana. Um, because I have you know the deck has so many good live top decks that you. That part, I, part of the fun for me is I think this is more than Anala is sort of like this too. Is that you. You like are constantly like like figuring out this weird puzzle of like how can I win with all of these like tools that I have and I'm drawing cards and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's it's like very fun. It's sort of like a stormy deck in that way. Mm-hmm. But without actually casting spells, which is really funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's so sick. Um Wow. So um, Martin, Sanuska, Sanusk, yep. all of the ways I can mess up your name. <laughs> yeah. um, so it, when I look at when I look at the Simic list and I, I think about you know how it plays through rule of law and all that stuff, what does the Soul Tie list do to overcome the same barriers? Rule of law barriers. Stacks barriers, interaction barriers. <laughs> it it, ha- it handles stacks pretty well, but it, it's specifically built ar- built to like be cheeky. Like uh, the the thing I usually say is uh, like if you play against this deck enough, you're gonna be scared when I cast a talisman. That's like the basics of it because you have no idea what's coming. Hmm. Hmm. And there's some interesting tricks that you do in your deck. Um, what are like some of the ways that you abuse Kodama? Well, the, the biggest one that I thought of early on was Necropotence. Because like, if you have Necropotence out with Kodama, and you just pay until you have like 7 or 8 life left, which is usually like 25 plus, if you get it out early enough, and you just have a fetch land that hasn't been cracked, you can just churn through all your all your fetches and just go nuts on the end step with all your cards in your hand. And it kind of turns into a like Shimmer Sir list, but in Soul Tide, which is really fun. 
But a lot of it is uh, also with to do with flash creatures and doing stuff at instant speed, which was the original idea of the deck. I have caught some of the flash. Some of the recently. Mystic Subduels. <laughs> Mystic Subduel is still in the deck. That card is amazing. I'm never cutting that card. But uh, just having the two CMC flash creatures or permanents like uh, Mystic Subduel, your Notion Thief, Ob Agent, and Hull Breacher just lets you like be very patient with what you do. Uh -huh. So you you can like, having Oracle Consult in your hand and not casting it is probably the hardest part about playing this deck effectively. Yeah, because I mean, with th with this list, you can flash out Mystics of Duel, and then oh, by the way, <laughs> there's a little little extra. <laughs> yeah, and when you get when you get to that kind of setup, it becomes a very political deck in a way as well, because mm -hmm. you have to you have to kind of know how you're portraying what you're doing. So you, you're kind of waiting for someone to do something important. Let's let's say someone casts like. Uh, like a Seedborn Muse with a Thrasios out in like 12 mana. Then like, people try to interact with it, they, they fail, and then you're like, okay, on the end step, I'm going to cast a Mystic Subduel, cast it, or targeting your Seedborn Muse. Then all of a sudden, you're playing, you're not playing Arch Enemy against yourself, you're playing Arch Enemy against someone else, but you're the one winning. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Which creates some really interesting scenarios where people start protecting your win without knowing it, which is really funny. Yeah, I can see, I can see so many lines where it's like, all right, guys, like, I, I think I have an answer for, you know, the Seedborn Muse. And you're like, okay, uh, but, you know, cast Demonic Consultation. And everyone goes, uh, okay. And then you exile your whole library and like, okay, Mystic Subduel. And everyone's like, oh, uh, what, what's happening? Wait, wait, what? What's going on? <laughs> what's going on? Kadama Trigger. Dasa? Like, oh, jeez. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's, that's why I like saying, like, uh, that people get scared of you casting a talisman. Because... You, you just know it. You just don't know what's coming. And it's mm -hmm. so fun. That's super, super sick. In your list, you also run Bolas of Citadel? Yeah, that's a recent addition. I cut Nos for Bolas of Citadel because it felt like a lot of the time in the soul, in, at least in this version, it's very, it can be proactive, but it is a mid range list. So you can't really turbo out the Nos fast enough compared to other decks. And also, the, like, a, a a NOS on your own turn just rarely gets there. A lot of the time with the deck, you're like one or two mana off, or maybe like a few cards off of winning. Like you, you all so many times you just look at your hand and you're like, ah, oh, if I had two more mana, I could win right now. Mm -hmm. Or I, if I had one more mana, I had a win plus protection. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So Polis Citadel has kind of served that purpose of just getting that last bit of value. And with Kodama out, it's just, it just goes a lot crazier. It's something as simple as having Kodama out and casting Phantasmal Image. And just having it come in as a copy of Kodama. And then just put down a Bolas of Citadel. Then you just play the two mana Bolas of Citadel. <laughs> two mana Bolas of Citadel is ridiculous. <laughs> it's, and then you just churn through everything. And then it's, it's so much. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. But you don't have to cast Kodama in this deck. Uh -huh. At least not in my version. Mm -hmm. Because it is just soul time, good stuff like in its that. core. Yeah, and then it just has ways to take advantage of Kodama if you can get it out early enough. Yeah, I really like the idea of casting a uh, like if you, you <laughs> look at this list, uh, casting a both Citadel and Kodama trigger and put out top. You're like, oh, okay, or put out Necropotence. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> So you just win. Got it. <laughs> yep. Oh God, so good. Awesome. Okay, so, um, and then the deck, the deck that I run, um, is uh, Wu Tang. That's the Abzan version, and that utilizes Konama in the way of uh, you can put Razaketh in the graveyard using a number of things, um, and from there you put a reanimation on. The st on the battlefield and you get Razaketh back, Kadama triggers um, you can actually, at that point you can just sack Kadama um, to Razaketh search for Hulk, 
Sack Hulk, get the Hulk pile with Malira, and uh, you can just win at instant speed. And I really liked the idea. Um, I, at first, I initially had brewed it with the intention of running some stacks pieces, but I do not enjoy stacks. Uh, it's not a style of magic I like to play, so instead I just went with a more uh, turboed version of the list, uh, which I don't necessarily believe is stronger, but I do like it still. Um, and really dove in on the on the Hulk uh, idea. But it, it does really well. It does the same thing with Necropotence and being able to crack lands uh, into winning the game pretty much in the instep. It's like a weird shimmer mirror kind of thing <laughs> where you just go, go, go at the instep. Um, really, really fun, though. Um, so the the biggest, I would say the biggest idea is here, and I really like that we see some, some decks that are really... Um, commander centric versus I would say like I would say I would say Hisp's list you know he said it himself that you know Kadama is the main feature piece and I think Martin Martin I think your list has more commander agnostic um, synergies which I think is really really cool uh, and then also you mentioned Tago Hisp and uh, I think of um, there's a guy from CDH Nexus Scotty uh, Scotty had a Tago list that he was all about it and now I'm seeing like so many variations. I'm seeing I see the, the, the new Naya stacks build. Um, I see there's an Abzan stacks build. Um, and the more I see like these different ideas, the more I'm like, oh man, there's so much more that you could do. Is there anything uh -huh. that that's come out recently that you think synergizes well with Kodama? Uh, I'm still thinking about the new Evoke Flash creatures, like specifically Endurance and Subtlety. Mm -hmm. uh, I still don't because just to, just I'm thinking about them as zero mana two and three CMCs at instant speed, but I, I'm not completely convinced yet with them. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the no-brainer is, of course, tireless provisioner. Mm. It opens up so many things. Yeah, Hiss, have you looked at that card? Uh, I think he's. Yeah, I, updated, right? I updated my list. <laughs> yeah, how crazy is it in either of your lists? It's pretty crazy, right? Uh, I haven't had it out yet. Yeah, I haven't played. I I also made. Well, I made one. I made a grist deck. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been playing a little bit, and then I I made. Um, I only played this one once, and I'm just sort of shelving it because a lot of people working on it. But the um, is it Sithis, the new enchantress? The two mana Selesnya draw a card whenever you cast an enchantment. I made that deck too. Those are my two of the of the set for new commanders. So and like I said, I I I don't know why I do this to myself, but I <laughs> I have nine right now decks that I can oh play gosh. and rotate through. So <laughs> I I don't like one of the things that's actually interesting is Inala got four cards, which is insane because Inala hasn't really gotten a meaningful card since um like scholar of the ages was printed and mm -hmm. like i figured out the spellseeker combo um like it's it's gotten like i think i've put in the the two lands uh just because i wanted to but it hasn't gotten any cards like i it got a whole breacher like mm -hmm. so did every blue deck mm -hmm. yeah but, exactly you know it's like that sort of stuff but like you know, Void Walker. I'd, so I, I'm actually looking forward. I think it'll be fun to play. I changed up four slots, which is like a lot for a deck that is like pretty settled. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, I only switched out two. Uh, I made some changes to my Sakashima Kadama list based on uh, Mean 16, actually. And mostly it was because, and I, I think this is the distinction. Like, I, I imagine both of your decks. Uh, work much better in mid-range pods. Mm. Um, uh, balance pods specifically, yeah, where you have a bit of everything. The turbo pods, I just get destroyed most of the time. Yeah, I mean, I was in, I guess, and this is sort of what I was trying to, to mitigate a little bit, is that, you know, the real competitive advantage, and I actually tried to do this when I was playing my chess, I, I don't know if this is like... Uh, cheesy or a good strategy but i would talk to people in the beginning of the game and be like how are your games going like what are you guys doing today 
And I was trying to get a feel for, I was trying to sound friendly, but I was trying to get a feel if they were playing stacks or not. And if I thought they were playing stacks, I would play Kadama Sakushima. Uh Um, Because it's like, I like, I mean, I'm biased because I brewed the deck, but I think it is like into a hot, heavy stack spot. It is like the best deck that you can. It's just like, it's a, it's impossible to stop it. So if someone says, I've made sure three of my paws went to a draw, you're like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a few people, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like somebody said they drew or something, and I was like, and they sounded happy about it, or like like that they contributed, and I was like, okay, cool. Um, and I did play this. Oh, I played, well, this is bizarre. I don't know, anyway, I won't get into a change. I played a very weird pod that had two stack decks and then like a like a battle cruiser Jaleva deck, and the Jaleva deck was actually crushing, and then they had like the server crash issue. <laughs> oh, it was that pod. It was Ooh, rough. It was, it was battle crazy. Cruiser, Jale- battle cruiser Jaleva deck or just Jaleva? Battle cruiser Jaleva. Oh, okay. They like they were running these like huge like turn spells and stuff, and like some card I'd never seen that was like eat, like search your graveyard and cast the same card three times. I don't know. I don't know what it was, but it, it was like Jaleva had like four turns on on the stack, and then the server crashed. I was like, well, I think we're gonna lose that. Yeah, that's like I have, um, I have my dog side countered by a convolute yesterday. Convolute three, three mana instant counter unless you pay four. Wow. Sounds awful. Man, you got that fast. That, that, that raised some questions. <laughs> yeah, it I bet it did. Oh my god, that's um, hilarious. Also, but I, yeah, I feel I, negated. That was great. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a little more reasonable. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Um, the, the, but like, I, so I made some changes where I put, I took Ristic Study out because I was just a madman and was like, I don't need this card. I'm just going to win through brute force and then played enough games where I was like, no, Ristic Study is a good card. It can draw me into some free interaction that I don't run a lot of slots for. So, um, and I put, I was testing like Manglehorn as like a good creature that can come down early. I'm just trying to get like, just anything to help with like turn three not dying uh to turbo because i was in these mean 16 pods and it'd be like two turbo decks and another mid-range deck that had more a lot more control because mine's like a proactive like anti-stacks but it's like a whole turn slower than the turbo decks and then so I, i would go to those pods and i would be like one of the turbo decks is going to win and that's what happened in every pod that was like that yeah, um, I, I've been putting in counterbalance to fix that, and it's been working out really well. Huh. So, I, yeah, I think it's, like, a combination of, like, it also it depends on, like, you know, the, so the, the one of the turbo pods, I was to the left of the, because of the, of the, it was Razakats, basically. It was Razakats, uh, Goto, and Coco had this really cool um, Ikridargo list that was really fast. One on, he cast a turn one pier, which was really demoralizing. Um, Jesus. turns out mana really fast really fast uh, so I and I sat to the left of Razakats and I was like I, I, I'm gonna lose there's no way I'm gonna win and that's exactly you know the only the only games in those pods that I won was when one of the turbo plays like punted and misplayed and then I won the only games that I won in those pods so it's like uh, you know, and p- part of the learning when this is when I was like, this is when I cut like Henge, for example, and I like I might cut like Mox Amber soon is to think about like, okay, the, the deck is already so strong into stacks that like these little edgy pieces that like, okay, maybe they'll get you there. You know, like right now, I think um, it's such a fun card that I might, it, I, I just don't have the heart to cut it, but um, like energy tap is like it seems so good it's like okay one blue six colorless when you've kadama out but it's like sometimes you you need the other blue it's like very hard to get the other blue like to have two blue open after you cast kadama and it's like that little stuff where it's like okay like now i've played like 60 games with this deck and like i'm just not seeing that scenario enough to where this card is dead a lot and it's like i think that it would be better as like I, you know on my list of like to test soon are, are some of the like uh, stacks pieces that I think would be very cool with the list, like Overburden and Mana Breach, that I haven't really run. Um, so, I, you know, there's a lot of room still for I think the deck to grow, which is which is cool and makes it like a deck that I still definitely want to. I'm excited to keep playing. 
Yeah, that's also a reason why I cut Bondu's Enclave from my deck, because it can draw your deck with Maloku and, like, uh, Dias Cradle, but that scenario just never happened. When I right. when, when you get when I do get Castle Garen Break, it's just a land that doesn't give me the color that I'm needing. Yeah, I cut Castle Garen Break as well. No, what am I saying? I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying the wrong card. Castle Garen Break is still in there, but that's probably still getting cut. Uh, Bonders Enclave, the draw. Yeah, you said Bunger. Yep. Yeah, I understand in your list. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Castle Garen Break is still in there for now, but I I've never actually cast Kadama with it. It's just been a green land so far. Yeah, it's it's funny because I've like a lot of times if I see I like I I think in my most recent update I cut all of my Entrance Tap lands because they just like they're just dead early I mean, and there's like, nothing worse than seeing Castle Garen break as your only land in your starting hand. Yeah, I mean you just have to mulligan and like I was I I yeah. fixed my mana a little bit too. I I put in um, Forbidden Orchard and I put in put back in. Yeah, but my coast because I just like I would have hands that would be like this is a pretty good hand except I have three colorless lands and it is unplayable. Uh, yeah, so, I just so like, forgot the colorless lands altogether. Like I have ancient tomb and that's it. Yeah, I, th this deck is really tough because on one hand, like you really want the utility lands because they really let you win, you know, with cloudstone and stuff like that. But on the other hand, it's like you really got to find a good balance between colors and utility. Um, and I'm only running like three basics, so that's pretty crazy for a deck that isn't trying to get on Tainted Impact. I was running Forest, and then I took it out again, but now I might put a Forest back in instead of Castle Garen Break. But oh, I, I put I, a I, back in. Sorry, Hire, you mentioned um, Yawabora is, is the second best land in the deck for my list, for sure. It's It's so good. So Aurora was like I think MVP for for being able to do really tricky stuff. Mm -hmm. It lets you fix mana and just like it's very cool. Yeah, that's really my biggest great. issue with the one I'm brewing now. Like uh, Aku from the Kodama server said he was uh, working on a Kodama Jessica list, mm -hmm. so I started hmm. brewing one up and realized that the lack of Oboro makes it so much harder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean that was one of the huge benefits of being able to play. Um, Sakashima is you don't have to run because the bounce lands are just pretty awful by themselves. You also have to keep them in your hand and not play them if you want to combo off with them because it's really hard to get them back in your hand. Yeah, I mean, well, it depends on. I like with my list, I have a lot of ways to get them back, but you have um, Cloudstone, but yeah, Cloudstone. I mean, all the all the cards that lift lands, I have five of them, so um, yeah. Like, yeah, you have five targets have the and then benefits I gain, I think. right? And then with green, a lot of the well, a lot of them are blue. Yeah, the exactly. two creatures are blue, and um, I have trade roots. Yeah, exactly. As well. I, you don't have access to those in Gruel, so that just makes yeah. it so much harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played Togo a bit, so I was. It's um, you have more land tutors, or no? I guess you don't for green. I was playing more land tutors. It's just a yeah different. It's a different beast. I wanted to say the other the other brand new card from Modern Horizons too that I think is just as impactful in my list as Provisioner. I imagine is uh, Urza Saga. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does that, what does that get for you? A jewel, either Jewel Lotus or Expedition Map. Um, but uh, you know, on turn three, it's it's plus four if you play it on turn one. Which oh is yeah, just... for expedition map, yeah, that's pretty good because like jeweled lotus on turn three seems a bit slow, even for your list, right? Uh, is, it, I mean, is, so... is that just where you want to cast Sakashima at that point? It depends on your hand. I mean, one of the things that is tough is that you'd have to have a uh, like a a decent like play in turns one and two besides obviously just casting urza saga it's not going to do much um so you, you cut out there yeah for me you, you, you had a there fetch you are call. you're back now oh sorry i had a call coming in um i was saying if you had like turn one urza saga pass and then like let's say turn two lotus cobra and you had a fetch land, then like that's, I guess, eight mana just off of that. Um, 
if you had a turn one Urza Saga and then like, let's say turn two Lotus Cobra and you would have fetch land in hand. So when Urza Saga pops on turn three, that's four, five, you could put the fetch in, get a mana, cast Kodama off that, and then you could fetch, which puts another land in. So that's like enough mana to cast Sakashima on turn three. Yeah, it's actually so, a big deal that Ursa Saga triggers as a in saga the main phase. And, not in your, and not in your upkeep. That is a big yeah, deal. Yeah, I didn't know that actually at first. I thought it was during the draw step for some reason, um, but it's, it's, yeah, it's huge. It's after your draw step, yeah. <laughs> Pretty amazing. I don't know why it doesn't say in the beginning of your main phase, like pre combat main phase, but that's just how it works. Mm -hmm. I really like, I just tend to like slant this way as a brewer. Like, I really like those kind of utility land cards. So, I probably put Urza Saga in more decks than maybe I should have. But I think, especially in a, in a list like Adama, where you like really are super mana hungry, mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be super impactful. Yeah, it gets you where you need to go for sure. I'm I'm just I'm having just having trouble just figuring out where to go with my list lately because it's it's there's so many cards that are good right now that I want to put in. I have like probably a list of like 10 20 cards that want to fit in the deck. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to take out any cards. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny my 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 the deck that I'm bringing that feels like that is uh Yasharn. <sighs> I feel like every time I see like this set I I um I pull, I like I updated eight other lists and then I have this Rishard list that I like literally just updated and I think I have one two three four five six, nine cards uh, <laughs> that are new that came in it was just like oh my god that's so funny that you're you're brewing Yasharn but like you also have <laughs> Kodama Sakashima they're like literally polar opposites <laughs> yeah pretty much they have yeah, green in common that's about it. I, I guess the, the the main thread for decks that I that are interesting to me is that I really like commander centric decks. Like I will never play blue farm mm. or like mm -hmm. decks that I don't know. Like I th I, I saw like comedian did a video about like that Cody the Codex Shredder deck got a big bump from Profane Tutor Probably. being printed. Yeah. For sure, and I just have I just have no interest in that because it's it's just like a Nas deck or like Ragrak Silas. I just like well, I will never play those decks. Yeah. yeah, I was talking about like the recently the meta being very swingy and experimental and very original, and then someone said, "Yeah, like Cody." I was like, "Wait, what? What are you talking about?" <laughs> well, I mean, I, I I don't know about you guys, but I made a Cody omniscience deck that i think is pretty unique okay pretty sweet <laughs> i i i ruled one up like the day it got released and it's it's so bad it had like it has like i think the one i brewed up has like 10 or 12 cards that are like eight plus mana uh, just focusing yeah. on like hypergenesis bullshit yeah yeah that's really fun my um, recent dud was i built a jadzy deck from the last set that was the only commander i tried to brew it and i i did the uh front side the eight mana side which is just too like there is a level to which too much mana is too much mana for i mean oh, if you're not the, doing oh, the, the flip side guy with the the simic guy yeah it's a simic jazzy's the jazzy side is blue but the the flip side is it's like a green sorcery and yeah. so jazzy is like it was also like uh um not omniscience, but uh, Enter the Infinite. It was an Enter the Infinite deck, and it was just like turns. I ran every extra turn spell. Uh, I think I played seven or eight games and lost all of them just because A, it was like hard to play. Um, and then B, it was like eight mana is so much mana. It really, Someone's actually it really playing that on the Nexus right now. I've been noticing. Someone has huh. been playing that deck. Interesting. I don't know what iteration, but. It's he's, like, also the, he's also the same guy who's been dabbling in uh, Kodama Bruce. Ah, uh, hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Black Coffee, I think he's called. Yeah. Is his nickname? I, I think also because I play a good Simic deck, it, it was like, it's just sad. It just made me so uh, sad. <laughs> it's yeah. So funny. Yeah. It was like, you know, like somebody would play Wandering Archaic, and I was like, well, I can't win through this. Like, <laughs> in a deck that wants to, like, pay an extra mana and, like, cast spells for free. It's just like. All right, I don't want to play. Like, I, I want to play Sakashima Kadama where I can just cast Sakashima and win off of anything. 
yeah that's so true all right uh, we gotta we gotta start wrapping up but um i do want to like give you guys a chance to shill um is there anything any place people can find you guys to play with or any decks or anything you guys would like to promote i'll probably start because mine's the shortest <laughs> uh you can always find me on the Kadama server. If anyone asks a question in the Soul Tie section, I am I am ready with a small essay of answer at any time. Uh, <laughs> I have I do play on uh, the stream for CDH TV with Mons occasionally, and I have won two games on his stream, but he hasn't posted any of the games yet, which is upsetting me. He wants to hold you down for sure. Yeah. It keeps inviting me back too. It feels like spite. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I mainly play on the CDH Nexus. Uh, during uh, European noon and afternoon times. <laughs> where so, there are almost no games. So the more no people games. in that time, the better. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming today. Uh, His? Uh, I am in a lot of discords. Um... I'm pretty a active in in a in a few in it, basically any of the decks that I am interested in brewing are are continuing. So I just joined, like I just joined the Enchantress Discord. Um, I mean, definitely the um, Kadama Sakashima. It's funny because like I, I feel like occasionally you either have like personalities or you know, like for example, I was in the Yisan Discord for a while, and I had this like very pro like sort of proactive Yisan deck. As well, as proactive as Yisan can be. Um, but I, like, didn't play any stacks, and I was telling people that, like, you should run, like, uh, Nihilus Intervention so you can tutor for Cradle, because it's, like, super good, and you should play Magus of the Candelabra. And, like, people, this this one person in particular was just, like, laughing me out. And so I actually, like, left the ESN Discord for, like, a few months. And I came back. I This is going somewhere. I promise. And then there's this <laughs> this very active, like, yeah, like very good pilot um in the east on discord now uh named physics um and he he has like a sort of a hybrid of stacks he's playing you know a bunch of the stacks but he actually has incorporated a lot of these sort of faster ideas i got him to play magus of the candelabra and stuff um but it's like i think he i feel like you need like these personalities that are like have a real big enthusiasm and want to sort of blaze their own trail for stuff. So like, and there's definitely people like that in Anala, but in Kadama, there's in Kadama Sakushima, there's like nobody else but me who's sort of saying like, this is what I play. This is the cuts that I made and stuff. Um, so I feel like of any of the discords, like that's the one where like, I just feel like I seem to be the only one who's playing this deck like a lot. And uh, you, I don't know, sort of having hard formed opinions about what's working and not. Uh, but a lot of the other discords, like I, it's just sort of fun to hear new ideas about stuff. Like I, I am, I'm in um, the Malcolm Breaches Discord, and uh, God's favorite deck. Who's favorite deck? Scoots. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I think it's. He's, I think a, it's he's a big fan of the pirates. Yes, big pirate I, fan. It's it's tough. I that's one of the ones that is still like I don't. I feel like I still don't have any idea if that deck is any good or not because I I've I've really gone through a lot of iterations and changes and I I don't think that I came up with this. Somebody I think came up with the fire weaver, like turning reckless fire weaver into a pirate, and then that with Malcolm out, that's infinite damage. And so just sort of like picking up on some of this new tech and stuff is pretty fun. Um, I'm sure the deck is bad, but it's fun. I don't know if it's bad, though. Like one of the pilots who plays Malcolm it's, Breach is like... Let's say it's not great. Well, that's it's what I mean. A, it's not amazing. One of the pilots who plays Malcolm Breach is... And like, I, it's funny because Le, Letano, uh, is, he plays a lot of Malcolm Breaches, and he and I talk about it because I, like, I play it sometimes. I've probably played it like 30-something times total, which is a fair sample size and he and i are both like you know the deck is not like exactly what you're saying it's like it's not great like it's not maybe it's not bad but it's not the best and then this other pilot he just talks about he just and he plays into these like good deck like blue farm and all kinds of stuff and he just like crushes and we're just like 
how, how do you do that? Like there's just not enough tutor density. Like, I don't know how you just don't, cause I like sputter with it. anyway. This is also a subject that is very near and dear to my heart. Mm. If you ever want to do a podcast on this hire, go for it. Cause hot takes on what makes a deck good versus what makes a pilot good and just general meta general cdh mindset things is i think it's a very interesting topic but that will take like another hour or two that is a deep topic and i would be more than happy to cover it uh i always also tell people because especially people come to the anala server and they would be like which anala should i play and like the, the the like sort of most outspoken are like the most notorious Anala brewers and pilots, like people who had this on the database and stuff. We were all just like, it doesn't really matter. You just need to play well. Like all of the lists are similar enough. We're like, we make our own sort of play style changes, but like if you play well, you're going to do well. And if you play badly, you're going to do badly. And it doesn't really matter which deck you use. Yeah. There are decks that punish bad piloting more than others, but good piloting is still going to win more games than good decks in my opinion. Yeah, I totally agree. Awesome. Um, I just to actually answer your question. Sorry. I, I, I play almost exclusively on the CEDH game server. I mean, I play on the Reddit server and uh, uh, I don't know if I find games elsewhere, but on cockatrice, I play on the, I've, I've been playing only on cockatrice since um, the pandemic mm. happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I haven't played in person yet. I also like to play in person. I really don't like to play on webcam. Uh, I don't know why I just, I don't have a good webcam set up and it like, I think it's a pain in the ass to like manage decks. Maybe if I start playing in person more then I'll have good decks, but like, like this new set came out and I just added four new cards to a whole bunch of decks. And if I wanted to do that, I either have to proxy a print and I just think it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, the first world problems. First world problems yeah, right? back, right? Um, awesome. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for joining me today. Um, if you guys liked this uh, podcast, tangential podcast, I'm going to call it, <laughs> um, please, uh, I guess, like it or subscribe if you want. Um, uh, I'll have links to everything that we talked about today um, below. And uh, thanks again for joining us on the late nights. Thank you.